I'm so glad you're here this morning. I feel like I got a word from the Lord for you. And uh, but I'm gonna obey the Lord. Um, Go and say it. On some things. But uh, how many know are familiar with the verse? The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Or in King James Version, it says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. And now if you take that verse and you break down good man or righteous man, I often wanted to know what did that mean? Well, you know, I want, because listen, by the way, if we have to go by our qualifications, I found, up, found out that I always come up short. That's why I always like putting on Jesus. You know, and being quick to repent and chase after Him. But that word champion and good man, that word righteous and good man actually means champion. One that is contending for the goodness of God. One that is contending for the goodness of God. And it says those that are contending for the goodness of God, then it says God will order your steps. Now, I mean, you know that uh, the Bible says in Jeremiah 20, 11, He has plans for you not to harm you, but to prosper you, give you a future and a hope. Amen. 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 How many know that means that God has good plans for you? But how many know we can look throughout the whole Bible and see men that followed God with all their heart, that championed the faith, whose steps were ordered of God, but very few of them were their steps easy. But so many times we think if we follow God, it's going to be an easy step. So if He's ordering my steps, we always, no matter how many times I say it, even myself, I catch myself thinking, man, on the way to glory. Well, listen, this side of heaven, we're in a battle. We're invading enemy territory and taking it for the kingdom of God. So every step you take, you're taking that blood-bought light and casting it into darkness. Every step, that blood-bought light, you're casting. And so, you know, the Bible says it's not the uh, it's not the healthy that needs the physician. It's the sick. So do you think He's going to order you your steps just to hang out with people that make you feel good? But isn't that what we always expect? On this vacation, let me tell you, I had an idea of what it was going to be like. I've been dreaming to go to Maine since my early 20s. man. I had an idea of what it was going to be like. I'm here to tell you not one of those ideas, Panda. <laughs> but I am I am assured that God had His perfect will. I am I can I want to tell you a few things, and I can see where my steps were ordered, but not one of them was ordered the way that I would have ordered it if I was ordering off the menu. And God says, and, and, and I'm like, well, God, you said the steps of a righteous man, a good man, a champion for you is ordered of the Lord. He said, yeah. And where did you ever read that? It's easy. But to see what's not happened though is we get into a few battles and we start convincing that everything is just too hard and you know, nobody, everybody hates me, nobody loves me, I might as well go home. But the Bible says that God's way is not grievous. It says His commandments are not grievous. They're not hard. If they're hard, you know why they got hard? Because we stepped out underneath the anointing. The gifts and callings of God without repentance. When we step out from the anointing, things get hard. Now listen, I don't believe you got to step out very far for it to get hard. I believe just one time you can go, I'm not going that way. I see what's ahead. I choose not to go that way. Let's go over here. These people need Jesus. And all of a sudden the anointing lifts and everything starts to get hard. You're like, why is everything so hard? Come on now. And uh, so, some of you are going, I need some verse for that. Okay. Psalms 37, verse 23. Psalms 37, verse 23. I'm going to get me a drink of water. Had all these weeks off. I'm getting soft. It says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. How many uh, know God wants to delight in your way? What does that word mean? Delight? Takes pleasure in. Gets excited. Overjoyed about. The expectation. Happy about the way that you're walking and the way that God is leading you. Psalms 37 verse 23 in the Message Bible means it says a stalwart. Anybody know what a stalwart is? 
someone that's like an old pillar, someone that's well established in the faith, walks in the steps of God. How I many know be to be a champion means you have to be established? That means you've been tried a time or two. Does it, you know, I had some talks with God on this trip. I'm like, you know, are these tests really necessary? <laughs> I know it I shakes you all the Pastor Brian whatever I'm like hello I deal with this all the time is these tests really necessary he said what I'd be doing it if it's not it says his path blazed by God his path is blazed by God you know when they used to go and make a trail and make the cut to cut the pass they would chop a, something off the side of the tree and burn a spot so it would scorch it. So it would be called blazing a trail so that those that are coming after them can follow them. See, champions are pioneers. They're ones that are going into untested places. They're following God so closely that other people are going to follow them in the path. Come on now, y'all about to get something. That's what it means a champion. And how many know you don't know, when you're blazing a trail, you don't always know what the next step is. I remember when I was following some other people, at least I could see what was coming up. You know, when you're in a when you're in dense fog and you can't see your hand in front of your face, especially up in mountainous roads, you don't always like being the guy in the front. <laughs> unless unless you're like me and you don't trust the guy in the front, you don't want to follow him off the side of the cliff. <laughs> so you gotta be careful who you're following. That'll preach too. Amen. Proverbs 16:9. Says a man's heart devises in his way. The Bible says the heart above all things is most deceitful. Say, so what's that mean? It means my fleshly inclinations, what my fleshly desires want, I can't trust unless they're lining up with the Word of God. Amen. And so, how many? And listen, I've devised my plans. For me, by the way, none of my plans was ever to come to Illinois. Not one time did I ever go. Man, Lord, if you would just send me to the cornfields. <laughs> Not one time. And when I got here, I was looking for the escape hatch. Uh -huh. Y'all don't know what that means. That's okay. I, I was looking for a way out. Me, me and Pastor Tammy, we, before this church was founded, we already had our exit strategy. We were going to plant another uh, thing of spirit riders over here. She was already putting in for a transfer. We were on the way out. And then some of you all could start coming to my house and getting saved. And I kept trying to put you in other churches and you wouldn't leave. I tried. I didn't want a pastor. I said, Lord, they won't go. But I had enough pastor left in me. I'll, somebody got to do something with them. They're getting saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized. Dear Lord in heaven. I don't want to do this, God. He said, I didn't ask you your opinion. I ordered your steps right here, right for this place, right for this time. And I haven't always responded. We still joke, but there's not a member of this church that don't know that I don't like the cornfield. I probably could work on doing that. I'm trying. But I can tell you this much that God even drove home this time out, especially out east, is that there's no other group of people that I would rather be with than you. There's nobody else I want to pass to. There's no other place I want to be. There's no place like home. There's no place like this place. I may never like the cornfields, but I always love you. <laughs> A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. So you can come. I, I had all kinds of plans, but when I was submitted to God, he was ordering my steps. And you know what? The funny thing is, I don't think out of all my plans, I can't really... I, this morning, I'm having trouble remembering if even one came with the way that I planned it. Other than I, other than I got the pretty girl. <laughs> but uh, I did many years ago. I still remember. I prayed exactly everything that she is. And then 10 years went by and she never showed up and Maybe more, and I just gave up on that altogether. And then the Lord sent her. And another verse here before I go along too much further in this, we're going to look. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. says, My son, forget not my law. 
but let thy heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. How many know he has to change his mind? Like Jesus didn't come to do away with the law. He came to fulfill the law because there was no way we could do it inside ourselves. But now through him and his grace and his mercy that empowers us, we can now do these things that are once impossible. Amen. 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 And so now he's promising, how many want long life? How many want peace? Listen, we may never have peace on the earth, but we can have peace with each other and with God and everyone around us while they're all in turmoil through Jesus Christ. And uh, it says, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. That means they can leave you if you choose. But don't do that. It says, Bind them upon thy neck, write them upon the table of thy heart. That means get so much word in you that becomes part of who you are. You all still with me? It says, Shall thou, So thou shalt find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. It says, If you'll do these things, you're on your way to being a champion. If you'll do these things, you're on your way to being a good man, a good woman. You're on your way to being someone who can order his steps. Now this next verse, I don't think there's a hardly a person upon the earth that can't quote it, but you ask how many of them are really living it, and you'll get a different answer next time. Trust the Lord with all thy heart. That's easy to say, isn't it? You know, it's easy to trust Him when you can see where you're going. But when the road is blocked and it's unfamiliar territory, and on top of that, it's not what you had planned, how many know it can start getting a little more challenging to trust? Because see, faith is a substance of things not seen. That means you're reaching over into the unseen realm. That doesn't mean it, it's real. It exists. That's the cool part about faith. It's right over here. You just can't see it. And you grab a hold of it and you pull it over into the scene. And when you do that, things start to change. That's what it means to trust God. Trust Him in His promises. And it says, lean not into thy own understanding. Now let me tell you, God's no, God's no dummy. If He didn't know it was possible for us to lean into our own understanding, He wouldn't have had to put that in there. But He knew every one of us were going to be tempted to lean on what we understand. So He wanted to encourage us not to do that. Amen? You all still... So next time the enemy beats you up, you're leaning on your own understandings. No, I'm working it out and trusting God. I realize I have the inclination to do that, but I'm smart enough to read the Word of God and be a good champion for Christ. And half the time, He's the one to try to fire the dart in your head and then try to make you feel guilty for having the thought. It only becomes sin when you act upon it. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Do you know... Whenever we moved into this church, it may not have been a big jump of faith for you all, but it was for me because in the natural, there was no way to pay the bills. There was no way to take care of everything. But God made a way. So when we founded the church, the day we found it, we, we wasn't one of those type of churches where someone said, here, we believe in you guys. We want to help found the church. We want to we want to sow some money. And no, I was just some and Billy Redneck to obey God went to a church went to a building made a long story short they said how much I drove around that day people I've been ministering to started putting money in my hands for the day was out God had all the money and from that on it's been history and God's added to the ministry almost daily for 10 years Amen. and I've had a, we've got to encourage pastors in Kenya and all over the country that had the, they would learned to depend on Americans to supply their needs so they need to learn to grow on God, Bishop Angelo just got through finishing a, uh, like a 400 member sanctuary church. Absolutely beautiful. Before that, they, before we went over five years ago, they, they didn't even have faith to build a straw hut. And not only is it about the building, but he's filling it with people that's getting saved, set free, and delivered. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so, uh, lean not into your own understanding. If everybody was honest, they would say, I have that inclination sometimes. I've got to resist that. If in all in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he'll send you in the right direction. Actually it says he shall direct thy paths. That means he gets very specific. I mean when he says he orders your step, he's not taking the chance that you're going to take the wrong step. I preached a message years ago about dancing through the minefields. I touched on it again uh, Wednesday night. You know, when you get when you fully trust God, you can be in the same minefield that had you all shook up, and you're barely stepping through it. 
and you can start just dancing around because you trust the one who's leading you. Amen. I'm going to say that again. You can get so in tune with the Lord, so trusting Him, and the steps He's ordered. Listen, I don't know anybody that wants to be in a call. No, I'm sorry, it's called the vine for the front Oops. Proverbial slip. No, it was more proverbial than I was being. Lord, forgive me. I know what I do. <laughs> you can be right in the middle of that. And, and that the, it didn't look changed from the outside, but you're trusting the one that's leading you. Amen. You all still with me? And he'll just take you right through there. He'll, so how many are seeing that having your steps directed is a good idea? I mean, look, God has a plan for you. And I want to I'm going to skip some of the rest of that because I have something else the Holy Spirit told me to do. So it goes on to talk about who the Lord loves, He corrects. That's not a popular subject today, but it's still true. Anybody ever think about Jonah? Jonah was a man that loved God. He really did. He really loved Him. He, he was following after God with all his heart. And God told him to go to Nineveh. And these people were living like a bunch of heathens. I mean, anything you could do that was against God, they were doing it. And then, and God said, listen, you need to go tell them if they don't change, I'm going to strike them down. And God said, why tell them? Just strike them. That's what Jonah said. Why tell them? Just strike them. <laughs> Jonah said, he said, no, Jonah, we need to give them a chance to get right. You go tell them. And Jonah said, why are you doing that? They, give, they got what they got coming. They've been acting a fool. They have told everybody. Jonah said, I ain't doing it. He hops in a boat going the opposite direction. The opposite direction. Now, just think, Jonah loved God with all his heart, right? And now, all of a sudden, he tried to order his own steps, but how many know it didn't change the steps that God had for him? As a young man, I took off and I became the biggest heathen in the world, but it didn't change what God had planned for me. There came, there came to an end of me where it came to either I chose, I chose God or I chose death. I kept going misery or I came back to God. I'm so thankful I chose to let him order my steps. But Jonah, Mr. I'm going to do it my way and I ain't doing it your way, God. The ship starts coming, the wet storms are coming. These guys are having him to pray and stuff, and finally they figured out that Jonah was the problem. And they're like, We hate to do this to you, but we're throwing you the deep. Throw him in in a whale swamp. A whale swallow. Whole. So, he's sitting here. Now, how many days did he spend in there? Anybody remember? Three, Three days inside. It was kind of a kind of representation of Jesus. But mm -hmm. by then, I'm sure everything was in there was smelling dead. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it was not in that. By the time he got out of that place, I bet you it didn't sound so bad to go to them. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you he was thinking in mind, those steps look pretty good to me. There'll be times in your life when God's directing you one way and it won't look too good until you've uh, maybe balked and went the wrong way. And you're like, you know what, that didn't look so bad in the first place. Yeah. Anybody been there? Yeah. And so anyways, he ended up there, he told the people, they repented, and then he got mad again. <laughs> went up and prayed and pounded up on the mountain to God. God, well... <laughs> and it says later on that God dealt with him. How about Abraham? How many, God ordered his steps so much that we're all part of his inheritance package. But he uh, he had to leave behind everything and everyone he knew and go to a country he didn't know. Of. And look at all the things Abraham went through, but God ordered his steps. If you ask Abraham how he, if that was what he uh had planned, I promise you he would have said no. See, so many times we miss the blessings of God because we don't like the packages coming in. So many times we miss what he has for us because we're trying to tell him how to do it instead of just follow his lead. How about Lot? Now, Lot only got saved because Abraham was praying for him. But how many know there was a certain way he was to leave that place? 
He was smart enough to listen. His wife wasn't. She turned into a pillar of salt. It's always good to follow the Lord's directions. Moses. That guy, he, he had it rough from birth, man. But God ordered his steps. He got to see things that some of us never only, only dream of. He got to see them, but God ordered his steps. Were they always easy? No, but were they always right? Yes. How about David? Saul was chasing him all over the kingdom, trying to cut his head off, <laughs> killing everybody he knew. Went from one battle to the next battle. He was a bloody king, really. Look at him. Yep. And all this, but how many know that David was God's ordained, ordained king? It was God's plan. You know, we can go and debate and say, well, was this from God or that from God? Listen, we have an enemy that's out to destroy us, but God has a plan. Each one of these men reached their destiny. Each one of these men got to their divine purpose. And so many times we think we're going to take the easy way out. That's what Christianity has become. I want an easier life, so I'm going to go be a Christian. I'm going to go do this thing. God loves me and everything's going to be peaches. When said, God says, no, I've got a purpose and a plan for you. I've got something that only you can do. And I'm going to have to take you some. How many of each one of these men's steps prepared them for the place where they were going? Amen? How about Paul? Killing every Christian he could get his hands on. And Jesus, the Son of God, appeared to him and said, Paul, Paul, why do you kick against the bricks? Why do you kick against the goats? But if you don't know what that is, there were these pointed sticks they kept behind the mules back then. Every time they would kick, they'd get jabbed. He said, why are you inflicting pain upon yourself over and over again? And Paul said, oh man, oh Jesus. I mean, Paul didn't get an easy life. He went from jail to jail to jail, but all the time he was getting closer and closer to Jesus. He was talking about how wonderful it was to serve Him. I mean, his steps were order of the Lord. He got out even told him, you need to, you're going to have to go to Rome. You're the only one that can speak there, Paul. I'm going to have to send you there. You know, so many times we think we've went too far, but I believe God can even use those steps to reach people if we'll just line up with Him. How about Peter? The guy that chopped off the ear, cursed God and died. Jesus had to come back and tell him, hey, go tell the disciples and Peter. Because he knew Peter couldn't forgive himself. Peter became the head of the church. So much so that even the shadow would heal people. But he still ended up dying in the gospel. But how many know his steps were ordered of the Lord? Amen. How about Jesus Christ? Spent all those years, 33 years, preparing for just a couple of years of ministry. He could have, he was more than capable before. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Lord, if there be any way, take this cup from me. He knew there was no other way, but he said, God, you know, if there be another way. I mean, that was not the easiest steps to fulfill. Those steps to Calvary. They said he should, he should have bled out before he ever even picked up the cross. Beaten and bruised. Beyond recognition, and he did it with me and you on his mind. His steps were ordered of God for our salvation. I'm here to tell you, each one this morning, God has something for you. I, I had a ton more plan to speak on. I'll just share a little bit. We uh, went on our vacation and we got to Niagara Falls, beautiful place, but it's surrounded by all this urban community. And it looks like kind of like East St. Louis. <laughs> Not kidding. <laughs> and we were there, and we went to church, and lo and behold, God had me minister to the pastor there. So I knew what we were supposed to be doing there. So we moved on, we seen some pretty stuff. And we got to Acadia, and it was not nothing like what we planned. It's a beautiful place, but a nice place to visit, not a place I would probably go to on purpose again. Beautiful. Pastor Timmy may have a different side of this. But I knew God had told me to go to these places. and So I'm expecting this great refreshing. You know, I'm expecting move of God, You know, being alone with Him, moments on the mountaintop. I was not getting this, and I was... 
complaining to the Lord. I know none of you ever do that. You're super spiritual. And time for church again, and I pray, and he tells me where to go. And there was a pastor there that was going through some things, and God used me to speak into his life and restore him. And he still, he just texted me the other day again. And the Lord said, if it had just been for them, wouldn't it have been worth it? I said, yeah, but I'm kind of thinking, you know, we still got some time left here, God. And I wanted to go whale watching really bad. I need my children to close their ears. But my children, were not, there was no, I, when I went to Maine, Oregon, on the other side of the coast, I thought Maine was going to be just like it. Oregon, it's beautiful mountains come down to sheer white rock cliffs, white sandy beaches and rocks out in the ocean. We got to Maine, and it looks like the gnarled landscape of uh, Mars or maybe even hell. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Twisted rocks, blocks, tubes. There's not a piece of sand in sight. The kids want sand. We told them there was going to be sand. And I looked. There was one sandy beach on Maine that everybody else knew about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You had to park a few miles down the road. No exaggeration. I right? didn't even think about walking in there to the parking lot to go the other mile to the beach. So we went south. And we stop it along the way, and we wanted someplace family oriented. And I'm praying, and they sent us to a couple places we weren't feeling them. And you know, steps of Reichman are order of the Lord. You know when you're going the way God wants you to go, right? So we got to this place called uh, Salisbury Beach, and I told Pastor Timmy, I think this is right. And there are places that were filled up everywhere. And this one place that caught my attention, and it caught hers too, and we talked, and we said, we'll just call and see. They have, happened to have an opening, so we went. Long story short, we got to take the kids to the beach. Beautiful place. But after we get there, and the waves try to kill me, smacking me on the back again. Love the long story. <laughs> Pastor Tammy and them start having fun, and they don't realize, I'm sitting up here on this beach, and uh, if I talk over somebody's head this morning, I apologize. I'm not trying to. But there was a spiritual warfare going on like crazy at this beach. I mean, it was just intense. Like, I'm like, Lord, I'm on vacation. <laughs> I mean, it was intense. And all of a sudden, these two girls, three, there was actually three, and they had a boy with them. They come down, and they're taking pictures, I think, for a penthouse on the beach. I mean, it's all hanging out, and they're moving to get the right pose, and maybe covering up. And I had literally my neck hurt so bad by the time we were left there from trying to turn my head. It was insane. Just being honest, am I not? And so I'm not real happy. They're all having fun, and I'm up here battling that, and my neck crooked. And this one young girl came up and introduced herself, and she had part of the bikini on at least. And uh, she went on to talk past Tammy, and God just started showing me her heart just how lonely she was. She was looking for love in all the wrong places. And finally, she hooked up with the girls over here. And they're all on the same beach. And so I'm like this. I said, I can still feel that right there. <laughs> so I said, was that going to trip you up? No, but I wasn't going to give it the chance to either. You know? So uh, we were we were there. And I told Pastor Tammy, and she, she was really oblivious because she was having a good time. And they were down below on the action. For, they're in the beach. They're here, and I was up here on the seat watching all the stuff for their defense. And then I feel led to pray with this girl. I said, well, Lord, you're going to have to work this one out. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still a little frustrated. Listen, I'm getting to the end of my vacation, and there's no been no vacation yet. <laughs> So much so that I hadn't told Pastor Timmy that God was having all this talk. Pastor Timmy, Pastor Tammy, about all this stuff going on the way home. She said, "Honey," and she don't say this ever. We've been married going on eleven years. She said, "Honey, I think when you get when we get home, maybe you need to take a couple days and go down home and get a vacation." She said, "You didn't get one at all." <laughs> I said, "I believe you heard God." <laughs> and so, uh, make a long story short, this. This girl, she was coming around as we're getting ready to leave. She came up, she locked eyes, passed Henry, and, and she was and she was walking right in front of me. And I, I, and I go, Hey, could I pray for you before we go? And she stopped, her jaw went. <laughs> and she said, What did you say? I said, Can I pray for you? 
She said, I know I'm not hearing you right. What did you say? Yeah. I said, can I pray for you? She said, yes. She says, I'm really in torment. And uh, she was just all tore up. And we locked hands and prayed with her. The glory of God hit. And I'm expecting to hear from her sometime down the road how God started restoring her life. And, but when she got done, she's like, I hope my friends don't think I'm crazy. <laughs> I said, I said, I wouldn't care what they think. <laughs> and then I left and I was resisting a little, went back up, and Pastor Tammy came up about 20 minutes later and the girl grabbed her and was talking to her. And uh, so God had answered the prayer. But that, and then the next day we got rained out. And then it went on and on and on. But each place God kept using us. The point is, it was not how I had planned. And I would really rather have a vacation. I kind of needed it. But the steps of God, the steps of a righteous man are ordered of God. Amen. Amen. But we want we, what we want to hear is the steps of a righteous man are good. It's only going to be easy. We're going to have it our way. And then as I was confident, I'm like, God, if I go tell all these people this, they're going to think that just following you is rough. And we know that's not true. That's why the Bible says the steps of a righteous man, they're not grievous. They're not hard. As long as you stay in the anointing, He equips you for everything He leads you through. Amen? So the key is this morning, do you have enough anointing to lead you through what God has for you? Glory to God. And if you don't, how many know the Bible says it gives to any man to ask liberally? Y'all with me? Let me tell you, I had to ask for some extra on this trip. Lord, I asked Pastor Jamie, she got up, I said, did you feel that in the atmosphere? She said, no, but I'm not really been concentrating on it. I said, my goodness. And usually, to be honest with you, when people are doing that way, I can pray and they get convicted and they cover up. There was no covering up this time. But I believe that something stuck at them because they were even asking a young girl at What's up with that guy? He won't look over this way. And I believe that God will start dealing with them. And listen, I'm not talking about condemnation. I'm talking about conviction. It starts to say, you know what? He wasn't mean. He wasn't. They're going to say he wasn't mean. He wasn't ugly to us. It's something different. I believe that they're going to start searching. Amen. You know, I didn't. I didn't make any snide comments. I didn't do anything like that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't dare do that. Except for the grace of God, there I go also. That was the message I had today. I shared more than I intended to share. But, you know, you need to be careful about getting dissatisfied in the steps that God's ordered in your life. And I want to encourage you. So many times the world bases their whole life upon emotions. If you, years ago, you heard me minister about getting off the emotional roller coaster. You know, faith, faith ain't easy. But faith will carry you through. And, you know, when Paul told King Agrippa, I think of myself happy, it wasn't about that emotion, it was based upon the Word of God. Romans 15, 13 says he'll fill you with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Ghost. But how I many know that's not based on feelings? That means that Word changes your feelings. It changes how you feel. And even if I don't feel joyful, there's been times I've been in so much pain where I've been re resisting and going through things, and I didn't, I didn't feel happy. I didn't feel any of those things, but the Word of God said I could have it. I would hold on to it. And I've had people that said, Man, you're awful happy for, for right now. And I just smiled. And I said, Praise God, man, this thing's working. <laughs> Amen? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Um, have something, I'm trying to make sure the Lord still wants to do this. I mean, no, I don't ever want to do nothing just to be done. And it's something we haven't done in a very, very, very long time. 
But you know, as much as we'd like to believe that walking these steps out, that offenses never come, that problems never come, how many know the Bible says they come? Mm -hmm. But we have to wash them in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Mm -hmm. How many know that God loves you? Mm -hmm. He's got plans for you. He's never changed his mind about you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And just like, and, and it may seem silly, but he talked to me through my vacation. There's much more I can share. But, you know, just like none of that went the way that I, I planned, I have no doubt that I did exactly what I was called to do during my vacation. I have no doubt that I was at every God designated and appointed place. And I guarantee I'm going to see places from it. But if you're always looking at what you're missing, you're going to miss where God has you there. 